Hello growers, I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. We publish articles, tutorials, and guides on the science and practice of growing cannabis. Today I'm testing the Mars Hydro FC6500. People have asked me to test it more than any other fixture, and it does not disappoint. It's a sleek, elegant fixture with a truly exceptional performance. Mars Hydro keeps raising the bar. The FC6500 is their best fixture yet. I'll do an unboxing, show the setup, run it through our official PAR test, and a second PAR test at a higher hanging height. I tested the dimmer and took its temperature. It has excellent performance all the way around. If you're in the market for a 5x5 grow light, the Mars Hydro FC6500 deserves your consideration. Grow light PAR testing is part of the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide. We conduct scientific grow light testing and publish reliable science-based knowledge, data, and reviews for home growers. You can read our grow light articles, try the grow light calculator, and review all the grow light PAR test reports. Our goal is to educate growers about horticultural lighting. You can support our work by following our links and using our discount codes when you shop for grow lights. I am excited to test the Mars Hydro FC6500. It arrived in a plain brown box. Let me show you what's inside. The fixture is folded up in the back, and the accessories are all up here in the front. First of all, we got the Mars Hydro stickers. And here's a hanging kit with the ratchet pulleys. A little cable to daisy chain dimmers. The standard Mars Hydro manual. And a power cord. Here, under this padding, we have the driver and dimmer box. Let's take a look. It is a large Inventronics driver. It does not have the brand recognition of Meanwell, but it is very high efficiency, and more and more top companies are using these Inventronics drivers. Okay, let's take a look at the FC6500 itself. It folds open easily. It's sturdy and solid, but also light with an aluminum frame. It's quite large, designed for 5x5 coverage. The LED bars are sleek. The diodes are well spaced out, so heat is not a major concern, and they can avoid heavy heat sinks. The Mars Hydro FC6500 boasts 3,144 top-of-the-line diodes. The full-spectrum diodes are the extremely popular Samsung LM301Bs. The FC series also features the OSRAM 660 nanometer diodes. This is a winning combination that has come to dominate the industry. Okay, let me flip the FC6500 over and hang it up. You can see that even though it is a large fixture, it's not too heavy to move around. I like the way it feels. It's well made. They include a hanging hit with cables and two ratchet pulleys, but in the PAR test, I like to use four ratchet pulleys. There are little brackets near each corner to attach them. And then I just have to pull on the loose ends to get the FC6500 hanging up. I think this is the easiest setup process for any of the 5x5 lights that I've tested. I'm really impressed so far with the look and feel of this fixture. Of course, the real test is coming up. I connected the cables and plugged it into the power meter, and now I'll just flip the switch and we have light. Let's take a look at the diodes. LED bar array fixtures look cool from below. Of course, in person, you should not look at the LEDs directly. I use serious eye protection when I film and do tests. When possible, you should turn the lights off when you're working in your grow space. But you can look now. This is a beautiful fixture. Long rows of diodes bathing the canopy in dense PAR light. Let's look up close at one LED bar. You can see the two different colors of the full-spectrum diodes. The whiter ones are up about 5,000K, and the warmer ones are about 3,000K. Among them, you see the occasional red glow from the OSRAM 660 nanometer diodes. As I mentioned, they use a total of 3,144 diodes. It is a really respectable number for a 650-watt fixture. I have to let them all warm up and stabilize before running the PAR test. So let's head over to the Mars Hydro website to see what we should expect. All right, this is the product page for the FC6500 on the Mars Hydro website. Product pages like this are always designed for marketing. There's usually a lot of information that is more sales pitch than science. But there are three pieces of information here that will allow us to get a better sense about the FC6500. First, of course, is the price. We see here that the current price is about $990. We have a discount code that will make that a little less. For the best deal on Mars Hydro fixtures, shop MarsHydro.com and use discount code CCFC. In addition to the cost, we need to know the power draw. The published power draw for the FC6500 is 650 watts. Some growers only use watts to evaluate grow lights, but to do it right, we also need to consider efficiency. Here, Mars Hydro claims a photon efficiency of 2.9 micromoles per joule. 
You gotta be careful with these numbers, though. They're often just calculated estimates of efficiency. We developed our Grow Light calculator to help growers analyze these data fairly. Let's run some calculations together. Here we are at the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light calculator. This is our tool to help growers estimate how a fixture will perform in an actual grow space. We load all our tested fixtures in the calculator on the right. You can see the FC3000, which I tested a few months ago. In this calculator on the left, you can enter manufacturer data about any fixture. I'll enter the data we gathered from Mars Hydro about the FC6500. The power draw is 650 watts. The current price is $990, a little less when you use discount code CCFC. And then we need to enter the data about the photon flux or the photon efficiency. The calculator gives options for different types of photon flux data. Most manufacturers provide calculated PPF data. If the data is from an integrating sphere test, we would select total PPF. And when we measure PPF in a PAR test, it is usable PPF. The efficiency data we got from Mars Hydro is based on calculated PPF. They claim an efficiency of 2.9 micromoles per joule or per watt. Okay, these results look pretty similar to the FC3000. The calculator estimates a usable PPF of 1,382 micromoles, which would give the FC6500 a usable photon efficiency of 2.13 micromoles per watt. This is just a little better than I measured with the FC3000. The calculator estimates that it should cover 21.3 square feet. I expected it would be too much for a 4x4, and these numbers confirm that. I'm going to test the FC6500 in a 5x5 area. I got it set up already. The test area is actually 150 by 150 centimeters, which is really close to 5x5 feet. I have diamond pattern mylar walls positioned around the perimeter and the Apogee SQ500 quantum sensor in the middle. I use the PPFD data from the sensor to set the hanging height. It's currently above 1,000 micromoles per square meter, so I have to raise the FC6500 a few centimeters. I take care to ensure that the fixture is perfectly level, centered, and square. If the fixture is lopsided, then the PAR map will be too. Once I get it close, I move the sensor around to make sure I'm measuring the highest PPFD. It looks like the maximum is just off center. I make the final fine adjustments to get the maximum PPFD right at 1,000 micromoles per square meter. As you can see, it's right there. And the hanging height is 41.5 centimeters, or about 16 and a half inches. Time to run the official PAR test with the FC6500. In a PAR test, I measure the photon density, or PPFD, in the center of each square in the grid. Each PPFD reading represents an equal area of the canopy, so we can use them to calculate the average PPFD and the usable PPF. You will often see manufacturers publish maps with the PPFD readings at the intersections rather than the center of each square. Doing that moves the sampling locations closer to the center and inflates the numbers. It is not a valid scientific sampling strategy. Growers sometimes ask me why I don't use the Apogee SQ620 extended range sensor. The simple answer is that I'm doing a PAR test, not an extended range photon test. The Apogee SQ and MQ500 sensors are designed to measure the PAR wavelengths from 400 to 700 nanometers. These wavelengths are responsible for the vast majority of photosynthesis. It is their density that determine things like hanging height. A lot of grow lights, including this one, also produce light that is outside of the PAR range. The UV and IR light may have secondary benefits, but it is not significant for photosynthesis. When you use the Apogee SQ620 extended range sensor, it counts UV, PAR, and IR photons as if they were all the same. There are good applications for it, but I've discussed this with the engineers at Apogee, and they confirm that it is not the appropriate sensor for PAR testing grow lights. The Apogee SQ and MQ500 sensors are the best quantum sensors for our purposes. Back to this test, the PAR map is better than I thought it was going to be. Let's check it out. This is a really good 5x5 PAR map. You'll notice that in the corners and along the right edge, the PPFD values are below the 500 micromole per square meter threshold but I hope you also notice the large area of very dense light in the middle of the map. I can already tell that the map will be a lot better if we raise the fixture a few centimeters, but this is the height that will maximize the usable PPF. Let's run the numbers on this test. As I mentioned, the hanging height is 41.5 centimeters, about 16 and a half inches. 
and the maximum PPFD is 1,000 micromoles per square meter. Across this PAR map, the average PPFD is 656.8 micromoles per square meter. That average, across the 150 by 150 centimeter test area, means that the FC6500 delivered a usable PPF of 1,477.7 micromoles. During the test, the power draw was only 621 watts. I checked that like four times because this next number was shocking. The FC6500 is one of the most efficient fixtures I have tested. It did way better than we predicted. The usable photon efficiency is 2.38 micromoles per watt. There are only a very few high-end fixtures that can match that efficiency. I'm really impressed with how far Mars Hydro has come. This is elite and impressive. All right, if I raise the FC6500 a bit, it will help the light spread into the corners. But the average PPFD and the usable PPF will go down. Since the average PPFD is already below 700, I don't want to raise it too much. I'll drag the sensor back over to this corner which had the lowest reading. I'll keep my eye on the PPFD there as I raise the fixture up. I'll do a couple inches at first. That raised the PPFD in the corner by about 40 points. I'll do another couple of inches. I'm not going to be able to get the corner up to 500, but it is better now. The hanging height here is 53 centimeters. I need to make sure it's even all the way around. I'll fix the focus down onto the canopy finally. And I just want to record the maximum PPFD near the center. I have it at 888 micromoles per square meter. Let's run this test. With the fixture here about four and a half inches higher, we've already seen how the corner has a little higher PPFD, and in the middle it's a little lower than before. Raising the fixture produces a much more even spread of light. However, it also gives more opportunities for reflective losses. Since we're exposing more wall, there's a greater chance that the light will reflect off the wall. The reflective losses are the reason that the average PPFD will be lower. And if we did not use reflective walls, that would be even worse. We wouldn't have reflective losses in that case. The losses would be overspill. All the light that slipped out the edges would be gone. The reflective walls keep most of the photons produced by the fixture heading toward the canopy. They also help even out the spread of light across the simulated canopy. The official test was as close as you can safely run the FC6500. You can think of it as the minimum hanging height. But as we're about to see, the PAR map is often better a few inches above the minimum hanging height. Let's check out the PAR map from this raised test. This is another great map. The corners are still a little low, but the distribution of light across the canopy is really even and excellent. There is still a large area of very dense light in the center, and now there is only one square in the corner below 400 micromoles per square meter. I like to compare the maps to see how changing the height affected the distribution of light. Here's the map from the official test. It is stronger in the middle and weaker along the edges. Raising the FC6500 to 21 inches allowed the light to spread out, which produced a more even distribution. At the lower hanging height, more light reaches the canopy. There is less opportunity for it to be lost in transit. At the higher hanging height, more light is lost. Although the PPFD is higher along the edges, we lost density in the middle, and the average PPFD will be lower overall. Let's run the numbers to see the net impact. In this test, I raised the FC6500 up to 53 centimeters, about 21 inches, and the maximum PPFD was 888 micromoles per square meter. I mentioned that the average PPFD will be lower when we raise the fixture. In the official test, it was 656.8. And in this test, it was 636.1 micromoles per square meter. Since the average PPFD is lower, the usable PPF is also lower. In this test, the FC6500 delivered a usable PPF of 1,431.2 micromoles. So raising the fixture cost us about 45 micromoles, mainly in reflective losses. The power draw was again 621 watts. So the usable photon efficiency is still a very impressive 2.3 micromoles per watt. These are really incredible data. The FC6500 is a great 5x5 grow light. For each fixture that we test, we generate these test report pages. 
This video will be at the top, followed by all of the data from the PAR test and my written review. Here's the main data from the official PAR test. That usable photon efficiency of 2.38 micromoles per watt is absolutely impressive. You can enter the cost here to see the cost efficiency. The price does change, but the best deals are always on MarsHydro.com. Remember discount code CCFC. Currently, your price will be about $960. That gives the Mars Hydro FC6500 a very competitive price of only 65 cents per micromole. 2.38 micromoles per watt for only 65 cents per micromole is really an amazing value. Below this area, you'll find the detailed PAR test data and the PAR map. I put the two PAR maps with their data down below in my review. If you have a larger space, you can use this calculator to determine how many FC6500s you'd need for full coverage. And below that, you'll find my written review. The Mars Hydro FC6500 is a sleek and elegant fixture with truly exceptional performance. I'm impressed with the efficiency, coverage, design, and build quality. The FC6500 is the best fixture that Mars Hydro has produced, and it's among the best fixtures on the market for 5x5 coverage. The fixture itself runs pretty cool. The hottest temperature on the LED bars was 39.9 degrees Celsius, 103.8 Fahrenheit. The Inventronics driver ran slightly hotter at 53.4 degrees Celsius, 128.1 Fahrenheit. I also ran a dimming test at the official hanging height. The dimmer is very accurate. At each dimmer setting, the maximum PPFD is at or just below the dimmer percentage. You can see that when we dim it, the fixture becomes more efficient. So the maximum PPFD percentage is a little higher than the power draw percentage. In the graph here, you can see that each step down is consistent from the top to the bottom of the dimming range. The FC6500 is a top quality fixture with excellent performance. It can light up a 5x5 grow space. The retail price may seem high at first, but it is a huge and highly efficient light. It outperforms many competitive fixtures which are more expensive. It delivers an excellent distribution of light to the canopy, it has truly top-end efficiency, and a quality fit and finish. I've recommended several of the recent offerings from Mars Hydro. The FC6500 is the best. If you're in the market for a 5x5 fixture, it certainly deserves your consideration. Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Testing is impartial. We always put the grower's interest first. Our goal is to provide reliable, science-based testing and reviews for home growers. We do not get paid for testing lights, but we do earn referrals when you make purchases using our codes. You can support our work simply by using our codes when you purchase a grow light. I'd like to thank Sean at Mars Hydro for sending me the light to test. And thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Check out my other PAR test and grow light physics videos. And I hope you come visit us at CocoForCannabis.com. We publish articles, tutorials, and guides on the science and practice of growing cannabis. You can read our articles, chat with our community, browse the grow light test reports, and try your hand at the grow light calculator. Join us in the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Challenges, and let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending all of you grower love.